If you want to increase the profitability of your marketing, there is arguably nothing more important than A-B testing. However, getting started with A-B testing can be an extremely daunting task. Well, in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a practical step-by-step -step walkthrough how you can get started with A-B testing in your business today using nothing but free tools. I'll be showing you how to set up the A-B tests, how to track the data, how long you should be running A-B tests for, and most importantly, some of the critical mistakes we often see in A-B testing that you need to avoid. So let's jump onto my laptop and we'll walk through it now. So firstly, let's just start by explaining briefly what A-B testing is. In a nutshell, A-B testing allows you to take two variations or more of a particular marketing asset, whether that be an advertisement on social media, whether it be an email campaign you're sending out to customers, or even your website or landing page, and test those two variations against each other. The way this is typically done is by some tool or software, which when visitors are coming to your website or seeing your ad, it will automatically split that traffic generally 50-50, so you've got a nice even split, so you can understand which version of that particular marketing asset has a higher conversion rate or whatever your main goal is. Maybe you're just looking to increase click-throughs. Maybe you're looking to increase engagement on the page. Maybe you're looking to increase the average time on page. Or maybe it is the actual conversion rate, lead conversion, sales, whatever it might be. And as you can imagine, the reason this is so important is because it allows you to take a website that is maybe currently converting around 0.5% of visitors to bumping that up over time of each variation to maybe 1%, 2%, 2.5%, 3%. So it's very possible with consistent and methodical A-B testing, you can literally 10x the growth of a business without even having to increase your advertising spend or increasing any related costs because all you've done is testing and optimizing the assets you already have to make sure we're getting as much out of them as possible and we're not pouring water into a leaky bucket. I'm gonna show you a way of doing this without needing any expensive tools or platforms or anything like that. This is a way you can get started with basic A-B testing for free today. So the first thing we're gonna do is to come on a website called Linkly. So it's linklyhq.com. I'll provide the links in the description below. We're not affiliated with these guys in any way, shape or form. It's just a tool that allows you to create links which you can A-B test and the basic plan is completely free. Now it's worth saying here, there is a limitation on the amount of clicks that you can test each month, but this is a great place to get started. And if you then want to expand how much traffic you're driving each month, you can look at one of the paid plans or maybe even getting a dedicated A-B testing platform. So once you've gone through the sign up process and created your Linkly account, you're going to see a page like this where you've got your sidebar and you'll then have create new link. So in this particular scenario, let's say we've got a page that we're driving traffic to through paid ads and we want to test two different headlines on this page. And let's say that when looking at the analytics or the heat maps on this page, we found that we're losing the majority of our traffic before they even scroll down. As such, one of the main things we'll want to test generally is going to be the main headline and hook because this is gonna be one of the first things that people's eyes are drawn to when they land on the page. So we might want to test some different messaging here. So I've got these two different variations of this page here. One says get a free website marketing audit and the other version is more outcome-based messaging that says turn browsers into buyers both promoting the same product, but we're just taking a different approach in how we position it to see if that impacts our conversion rate. So what we're now going to do on Linkly is we're gonna start with our control page. So the control page is the main page that you're currently using, and we'll be testing that against the new variation page we've created. So let's say this one's our current control page. So we're gonna copy that link and paste it in destination. And what we're gonna do next is under targeting, we're gonna click on rotate. We're gonna grab the link from our variation page, and then we're gonna plug this in the destination here. And you'll see by default, this is set to 50%, which means it's evenly going to distribute all of the visitors between these two different versions of the page. So once we've done that, we're gonna just come down to the bottom and click save link. You'll see it's now given us a link here and we can use this link in our marketing. And what will happen is Linkly, when people click on this link, it's automatically going to distribute and rotate that traffic for us for each version of the page. So you see if I copy this and then paste it, 
it's going to pick one variation of that page to send me to. And you'll see if I try that again, now I've got a different version of the page. And if we then come back to the Linkly dashboard and click on traffic now, it will actually show us the statistics of how many people have clicked on each version. Now the limitation with Linkly in itself is what we can't see here is what was the conversion rate from each version of the page. So this is where we're gonna use our friend Google Analytics. So what you're going to do when you're in Analytics is you're gonna to go to the report section. You're gonna to come to life cycle, engagement, and then landing page. Now by default, Google is just gonna show you a bunch of different landing pages on your site. So what we would want to do here is to search for the URLs of both of those landing pages. Now, because I've only just set this up now, there will be a bit of a delay in terms of those visits being tracked in analytics. But what you would be able to see here is the amount of visitors that this page has had and then the subsequent conversions and also most importantly, the conversion rate. So over the course of us running this experiment over the next couple of weeks, we will then start to be able to monitor the conversion rate difference between these two pages to then make a decision in terms of which page is going to become our new control, i.e. the winning page, whichever had the highest conversion rate, we would then set that as the main one. Now that doesn't mean we're going to stop A-B testing there because we now want to be testing other elements to see how we can increase this conversion rate further. Now that we've got the A-B test set up and it's running, let's talk about one of the most important parts of all of this is tracking the data. So here's an example of a document that you can use to start tracking the results from your A-B tests. I'm gonna to link to a template of this spreadsheet in the description below this video so you can jump in and start using this straight away. So I'll just walk you through what we've got here. Firstly, for any test that we're doing, we're going to want a hypothesis. So what is the problem that we found and what is the result that we're hoping the variation page is going to achieve for us? So you'll see with this example here, well, let's say we've got a web a landing page that has a form field that's, our, that's asking for a contact number and another version of a landing page that has a sign up form that doesn't ask for a contact number. So maybe our hypothesis here is that we feel a lot of people might not be comfortable sharing their number at this stage. So we want to see if we can increase conversions by removing this field whilst also retaining the amount of sales we're getting because it's important to bear in mind that if we're not asking for the mobile number, we might find that we're just getting a lower quality of lead. So what we're going to do is we're going to track the spend here if applicable. For example, you might be testing this using email marketing, in which case you wouldn't need to put a spend in. So if it's not relevant, just put NA in this field. Next, we're going to track the visits. Then we're going to track how many leads did we get from this variation of the page. Now, if you're an e-commerce store, you can obviously ignore this field as well and just put NA in here if you're just looking to drive sales as the conversion event. So we're then going to track sales in this column here and then the total revenue that has been attributed from this page. Now it's important to note with revenue, if you currently run an e-commerce business, you should be able to track your revenue directly through analytics in GA4 and you'll see that here. If you have a lead gen business where the conversion event typically happens offline, you may need to use your CRM to manually track and attribute that data. So it can be a little bit more tricky there to actually track the revenue. But most CRMs will actually allow you to track what's called the UTM parameters of how that person landed on the website. So you should be able to see which page they landed on first and where that person actually converted from that's led to the revenue. So once we've then plugged in our information here, the orange cells are then formula cells, which are going to tell us our lead conversion rate, but also our sale conversion rate. And if we're putting paid budget behind here, importantly, what's our cost per acquisition? So for example, we can see here that our hypothesis was correct, that since removing the contact form, we did have a higher lead conversion rate. However, our sale conversion rate has gone down significantly. So actually, when we look at the cost per acquisition, even though we've got a higher lead conversion rate here, so more people signing up, actually our cost per acquisition is better here because even though we had less people signing up, we seem to be converting more of them into paying customers, maybe because they were higher intent, maybe because our sales team had the opportunity to call those customers, or maybe a mixture of both. So what we would then want to do is just to document and 
put our final notes of our observations here. So when we come to doing our next test, we've got a clear record of the experiments that we've already run. And then all you would do is every time you do a new experiment, you can literally copy these cells and then just paste them below. So this is another experiment here where, like I mentioned earlier, let's say we've looked at some heat maps using like Hotjar, Lucky Orange or Microsoft Clarity, and we found that 80% found that of our visitors aren't even scrolling below the fold. So we want to see if a different hook and headline will keep people longer on the page and subsequently get us more sales. So this is like the example we just looked at with these two versions. So again, we're just going to put in the names of our headlines, total spend if relevant, total visits, and then the rest of the columns. And then from there, it's going to tell us the results of this experiment. So you'll see in this case, because we're not really changing anything to do with the sign up form, we've actually had a similar sale conversion rate. But headline B has resulted in a significantly higher lead conversion, meaning we've got a cheaper cost per acquisition overall. Now you might now be thinking to yourself, well, how long should I run one of these experiments for? How many visitors do I need to get? Now, in instances where it's not so clear cut, you may want to use a statistical significance calculator. I'm going to link to this calculator in the description below this video. This is just a basic calculator by SurveyMonkey. So what we're going to do here is put in the total amount of visits for our variation A and then total amount of visits for our variation B, and then the number of conversions that took place on each of those pages from looking at analytics. Now, again, it's important to remember here that the conversion event is going to look different for every business. So you might be tracking sales as the conversion event. You might be tracking leads or signups as the conversion event. So whatever that conversion is for you, that's the number that you will put in here. These two at the bottom, you can just leave them as they are. So you see here from this data, it's showing us that we had a 1% conversion rate here and a 1.14, and this is saying it's a significant result. So this will give us the confidence to then implement that change, knowing that it probably wasn't just down to chance. However, if we look at a different instance here, where let's say we've only had 50 visits to each page, five conversions on A and eight conversions on B, even though we've had a higher conversion rate here, it's telling us the result isn't significant because there's simply not enough events or traffic that has happened. Whereas if variation A only had one conversion, then we can be more confident behind that. So there's not really a particular limit in terms of the amount of visitors you need. Sometimes you'll find an experiment where it's so clear cut from the get go, you don't really need a huge amount of visitors. Other times you might need to be running an experiment for a little bit longer to get any real meaningful data in. Now, even though I've just been covering landing pages in this particular example, in this particular setup, A-B testing, like I mentioned, can be used for anything from testing different ad variations to testing email campaigns or even testing different phone scripts in sales. The key is that you're doing this in a methodical and data-driven way. One of the most common mistakes we see businesses making when it comes to A-B testing testing is testing too many elements at one time. For example, let's take our website audit page here and say we wanted to test this with a completely different layout. We've got this version and we've got this version. If our variation version is performing better than our current control, the problem here is we have no idea which of these elements led to that increase in conversions. Was it the headline? Was it the different call to action layout? Was it the fact we've got the form immediately available? Was it the structure of this page? Was it that there's more white space on it? We simply don't know. So whilst it's great that we've now got a page of a higher conversion rate, it's very difficult for us to be able to learn and understand from that data. So you're better off splitting your A-B test into micro experiments that you can do based on some of the trends you're seeing. The next mistake we see people making is not being led by data in the first place to form that initial hypothesis. So like this example here, we've talked about looking at heat maps initially and finding 80% of our visitors were not scrolling below the fold. So what we sometimes see is businesses testing different things right at the bottom of their page. But then when we look at data in heat maps, we find that only 5% of visits are getting this far down the page. So really, it's a bit of a waste of time because there's only such a small fraction of their audience who are actually going to see those changes. Or let's say, for example, we're looking at some session records 
recordings on our website and we see that people were clicking repeatedly on a particular image, it might be because they thought it was a clickable link. And as such, what we might want to do is actually make that image clickable so that people can still get to that desired conversion action. Really the key here is just to use whatever analytics platforms you have available to help drive your decision making and create a hypothesis which you're going to build that test upon. Because otherwise you're really just scrambling and aiming in the dark and trying random things with no real reason. One of the other things you want to be very mindful of is things like external factors that may be affecting this test. For example, let's say we're running paid ads to this page and during the experiment, our paid media specialist has made significant changes to the target audience that we're now targeting. That could end up completely skewing the data we're seeing in this experiment. So it's really important to think about anything external that could be impacting the data that you're getting from this experiment. When you start using more of the paid A-B testing software, you'll find that some of the more complex solutions out there, things like VWO, will actually give you a huge variety of options and being able to do things like only running tests from particular traffic sources or maybe people visiting from particular devices. So you can really isolate those tests and remove as many of the potential variables as possible. So again, you can be more confident in your decision making. Now, if you are looking to get more serious with A-B testing or you're driving large amounts of traffic or spending large budgets on your advertising campaigns, you might want to look at a more robust option, something like VWO, which is going to allow you a much greater degree of granularity and control over these tests. It also gives you the ability to do lots of other variations of A-B testing, which are outside of the scope in this video, but I'm going to link in the description below this video to our ultimate guide to A-B testing, which will cover these in a lot more detail. VWO has also started offering a free plan specifically for A-B testing, which can track up to 50,000 visitors a month. It is worth saying this is going to be slightly more complex to set up than just using a basic link rotation tool. But if you're willing to get stuck in and learn a platform like VWO, it can become extremely powerful, begin significantly boosting your conversion rate over time. Now, if you've got this far and you're wondering what kind of things you should be testing on your page in order to give yourself the best chance of increasing that conversion rate, you're gonna wanna stick around for the next video I've got coming up, which is gonna go through some of the key elements on the highest converting landing pages out there to help you get significantly more conversions from your marketing. I'll see you there.